Notion just crossed 100 million users worldwide. But if you're new, it can be pretty overwhelming and feel like you have a potato brain. But I've used Notion every single day for the past six years, for med school, YouTube, and now to run my business. So I wanna help you shortcut the process of growing this potato into a supercomputer. These are my top Notion secrets you might not know, but we'll be damn glad you do now. And we're gonna start off with some banger editor workflow tips. So as you know in Notion, everything is a block, including all of these text blocks and these call-out blocks and these toggles. And to change which block it is, you can click on these six dots here to the left, go to turn into, and then choose another block type that you wanna change it to. But what you might not know is that you can actually avoid any mouse clicks and just use slash turn into, and then change this block into something different. Another really cool workflow tip that Notion kind of just rolled out is for all callout blocks now, you can actually remove the icon and have a much cleaner block like this. And you can change the color of it to just have these really nicely formatted blocks. Now this next tip I kind of discovered by accident. As you know, if you use Command P, you can search for and pull up any other page in your Notion database. But one day I accidentally misclicked and used Command O. And then obviously, because I always talk out loud to myself, I'm not crazy, I swear, but then Notion just started transcribing everything I said and then putting it onto this page. So using Command O, you can dictate instead of typing, especially if you're a slow typer or maybe you wanna to talk to get your thoughts out. So and you can see at the top right here of Notion, there's this little stop button and this little waveform to show you that it is transcribing um, in whatever microphone you are using to do so. Fun fact, this also works on the iOS app. I'm not really sure if it works on Android because I don't have an Android phone, but at the bottom right, there is a microphone button. So this is really useful if you maybe take walks and you want to talk and get your thoughts out or you take meetings on the go. It's a really great way to capture ideas without having to type or use your keyboard. So along the same veins of being clumsy with your fingers, if you accidentally delete something in Notion, maybe you deleted some important databases or other blocks that you didn't plan to, go to the top right, click the three dots, and if you scroll down to this area here, you'll see a version history and show deleted pages. If you click version history, you'll be able to see a history of everything on this page that happened by what time it was as well. And you can even restore it to that original state before you might've made those screw ups. So you can sleep with peace of mind. Notion is always watching. It's kind of creepy actually. And since we're hanging out in the settings already, another one of my favorite tips is to lock the page. Again, this is for my clumsy fingers and clumsy clicking. If I don't want to accidentally delete something, the page basically becomes read only. Um, and especially if you're working on a team, this is useful in case someone accidentally deletes something and they don't want to fess up about it. And then they blame you for just being forgetful and having amnesia. But speaking of collaboration and team members, that is actually, I think, one of the huge benefits and selling points of using Notion. So I wanna share some of my favorite collaboration tricks in Notion as well. If you have multiple people in your workspace, whether as guest accounts or as members, if you go to the top right, you'll be able to see the icons of everyone who has viewed your page. And if you hover your cursor over their image, you'll see the last time that they actually viewed it. One of the main reasons we use Notion at Koi is to create content and plan out scripts. So for example, if I go over to this outline of this video that I'm filming right now, you'll see that I just have some bullet points of the topics that I wanted to cover. And a new Notion feature that they just rolled out that I really, really like is if you go to the top right again, go back to the settings and you can turn on suggest edits. And this way you can leave comments like to maybe delete this line and it'll just suggest deleting these things. If you wanna add more notes because they missed something, you can suggest edits and still preserve the original document. And once you finish, go ahead and go to the top right, and click this X here, and now we're back to the regular editor. And then when your collaborators see it, they can either accept it, reject it, or leave a petty emoji for you to ruminate on. Sometimes you wanna share pages with people who might not be in your network. They might not be on your team. For example, if you are pitching a brand or if you are sending some documentation to someone that you might be interested in working with, you wanna share a public page. And you can easily do that by going to the top, clicking share, and then publishing this site to be public on the web. I've done this dozens and even hundreds of times. But the thing is, sometimes I forget if pages are still live and they have sensitive information that I actually don't want the public to see. What you can do is go to your left sidebar, 
click on settings and members, go to sites and insights. You should be able to see all of the published sites that you currently have that are active. And from there, you can click on the settings for each page and actually unpublish them if you want to directly from here and clean up all of your private documents. And speaking of public Notion pages, this next tip here is a game changer for any creators or entrepreneurs who use Notion as part of the delivery for their business. So maybe you're like me and you sell a Notion template. The problem is if someone duplicates your template into their workspace, they don't get automatic updates if you make changes to your templates. But there is a small workaround we can use with sync blocks. So for example, if you do grab my extended brain workspace and you expand the toolbar, um, there is a start here toggle. And in the start here toggle, you'll see this sync block under current version. And as you can see, this is in over a thousand other pages because of all the people we've helped build extended brains. But if you click on the drop down arrow, the original sync block lives in my workspace actually. And this workspace is public. And so what you want to do is make the page that the original sync block is on public to the world so anyone can see it, but you only want to grant view permissions. And now you can paste that sync block in your templates or anything that you share with your customers or your clients and any edits that you make in the original sync block, it's going to automatically update in all of their sync blocks as well. And they can only view it. They won't be able to edit it at all. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, this is my extended brain. It's an all in one learning and productivity system I created. It's plug and play ready to go out the box. So if you'd rather save your precious time for creative work instead of building something, I'll leave a link below. But regardless of which workspace you use, let's quickly run through the must know keyboard shortcuts to abuse Notion. All of these keyboard shortcuts are for the desktop version of Notion. So remember that using Command P, you can pull up another page in Notion. And instead of just navigating to that page directly, if you hold Command and hit Enter, you can open up another tab for that page so you don't lose your original page. And now if I use Command Option left and right arrow, I can navigate between my different tabs. This is the same thing that would work on a browser that you're using. Similar to a browser, you can use Command W to archive and close that tab or Command T to create a new tab and it's going to duplicate the existing tab that you already had. Another new feature that Notion kind of silently released is that you can now click and move your tabs around to reorganize them. Another cool thing with tabs, if you double click on them, you can pin them and create little pins here to get back to your most important pages at any time. It is important to note that if you do restart Notion, that these pin tabs will not be there anymore. Um, just a minor cosmetic thing that I really hope they fix in the future. Another really useful hotkey, if you're in your editor, if you hold Command Shift up or down, you can move that block up or down. Um, even between lists like this. Command Shift Backslash will toggle open your comments on the right, so you can always see all the comments for your page. And Command Option U toggles your inbox on the left side, so you can see all the updates in your workspace as well. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to some of the more advanced secrets. This is for you mystical arts practitioners in Notion, all about databases. So in a table view database like this, if you have a lot of properties that are shown, but you always want to see a few of the important ones, you can actually double click on this and click freeze to column. And that way, if you scroll to the other properties, these ones will stay fixed. You can also label properties by clicking on the property itself, clicking on this little eye, and then you can add a description. This is for task completion. What that's going to do is create this little eye icon. If you hover it over, you'll see exactly what this description is. Another secret here is batch adding pages into databases. Normally, if you want to create a new pages database, you have to click either plus new at the top right or click new in the database and then make a new page and repeat this process like this. It's very tedious and slow. So what I've been doing instead is just creating text blocks first and then moving them into my database. If I want to create 10 tasks and put them into my database, I would just go like this. Task one, task two, task three, task four. I'm not going to make all of them. It's too tedious. And now what I can do is just click and drag all five of these into this database. And now I have five new tasks right here in this database, way faster. Another cool feature that Notion silently rolled out is you can leave comments on database properties now. So without having to open up a page, I can go to a database property here, click on the little comment button and leave a comment. Is this really the right date? Another pro tip is that if you use a lot of different database views to always make new views of databases in the original database itself. So for example, if I go down to my extended brain into my operating system, all of these views are in my original database. What that allows me to do is create customized database views that pull specific views from multiple different databases, right? So if I wanted to take this consuming view, I can click on consuming, I can click copy link to view, and now I can go back to somewhere in my extended brain. And if I paste that, 
I can create a linked database view. It's only gonna show that consuming database view. And what I can do now is if I click plus, maybe I wanna add a board view, I can link a database. I can pull a view from either the same database or even a different database if I want to. Let's choose the tasks one. And all of these views that you see here, table, task inbox, global inbox, calendar, these are only views that come from my original database that I can pull in to create a custom view. So always, if you wanna create new views, use the original database, not a linked database here. And you can tell the difference, the linked ones always have this little arrow next to the database name. And to go back to the original, click on the dots here and go to view database. Now here's another crazy hack if you're working with original databases like this. If you go to the top right, you can actually duplicate this entire database with content or empty. And this is really helpful if you've created a workflow that you now wanna replicate in another part of your business or in another workflow that you're working on. So you don't have to start from scratch. Now, as you start to use Notion more, you're gonna realize is that databases are like the core power user feature. And you're gonna be doing a lot of editing and changing properties and stuff to manage and organize your ideas. So I wanna show you four different ways to edit multiple properties in databases. And they're gonna go from noob status to pro status. Starting with the first one, which I call the clueless way is going cell by cell. Let's say I wanted to add this frog to all of these. This is a very slow and clueless way of doing it. The next way I call the savvy geezer way because I know that older folks usually rely more on their mouse than using keyboard shortcuts. So when a cell is highlighted, you'll see this little dot at the bottom right. If you click and drag down, it's gonna automatically duplicate everything in that cell downwards. Or they can move over to the left side here and click this checkbox and then uncheck all the ones that they don't want to edit. And then they can bulk edit any property here by clicking on the property they want to and then replacing or changing the property itself. All right, the next way I call the hack way because you don't have to use a mouse if you don't want to. This is all using your keyboard. So you can navigate through your database by using the arrows like this. If you hit enter on a property, it's gonna open up the property options. You can go ahead and choose which one you want click enter again. And now what I'm gonna do is hold shift and click the down arrow and then click command D to just duplicate that property for all the different cells. Or I can use command C to copy that property and then just command V and paste it below for the properties that I want to. All right, and option number four, I'm gonna call the expert surgical way because you have the most precision to get exactly what you want. And this is to create something called a button. So I'm gonna create a button by using slash button. I'm just gonna call this button replace. And now all I'm gonna do is add an action, click add action, and I want to edit pages in. I'm gonna select the database that I want to edit the pages in, and then I can change the property that I want to edit them in. So let's say I want the tag all to be need. And so if I stopped right here and I run the button, it's just gonna add need to all of these cells here. But the surgical part is if I want to filter it first. So I can go to all pages here and then I can change the filter. So maybe I want to add only a tag for the ones that also have a calendar date that is not empty. Delete all of these just for demonstration's sake. And now if I run the button, it should add only a need for the tasks that have a calendar date. And so as I mentioned, if you're interested in a behind the scenes look at my extended brain system, how I use it myself at Koi, then check out this video over here. It's definitely gonna give you some inspiration and ideas at least to help set up your own system.